Good morning you guys and welcome back. I wanted to just give you a tutorial on how you can go about making a light, low light to medium light plants. So you can see here is I have a housing that goes around the light, um, the socket itself, and then I utilize just a regular, this is a nine foot, just your standard two prong. Uh, extension cord. These are the supplies. So I have a Phillips screwdriver. This is a electrical tester. Wire cutters. Electrical tape. A sharp knife. And then these are some special wire strippers. Model GS 394. Here's the light shroud or the casing. This one right here is a 15 foot extension cord. Basic light socket. Light bulb. And a couple wire ties. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get to the build. All right, you guys, so getting back here to the build, um, make sure you are aware of what you're doing. This is very basic electrical, by no means am I I'm trying to come off as a master electrician, um, licensed electrician, so on and so forth. So, again, this is very basic. It's always in the comments below. Um, you can always uh, uh, put any questions and so forth, and I will do my best in order to get back to you guys. So, um, first thing I'm going to start out with here is that 15 foot, these come in various lengths 3 foot, 6 foot. Um, 9 foot, 15 foot, and I just decided to go with the longer ones. I got these at Menards, um, and uh, again, these aren't your grounded, these are all in your two prong. And go ahead and unravel it. And you'll see, I like to, right about here, is where I'm going to go ahead and simply right down the center there's a groove which separates uh, the common from the neutral and I know on here um, which one's the hot and which one's your uh, neutral so the black wire um, if you're looking at the socket here um, is obviously going to be your, uh, your hot and your white is your neutral. So again, when you're talking AC, it's alternating current. DC is direct current. So there's, don't get those two confused. Um, to learn more about electricity and how it works, uh, the best thing to do is to go online and get yourself familiar with it. Um, but that's why I highly advise before you do any cutting of any sort, again, I didn't uh, disrupt um, the coating uh, around either of the wires. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So you can see it is plugged in. I'm touching it, not getting any like electrocuted <coughs> by no means. So it is safe to do that. Um, just be careful that you don't actually cut into um, uh, you know either one of these wires as you strip it down the center. Just follow that line really carefully. Use a nice sharp knife. And um, then you can go ahead and take and that way you know for certain which one um, is your, uh, your hot wire and which one's your neutral. So the hot is going to illuminate um, on this uh, uh, voltage probe here. And you can see there, uh, you can see I'm touching that there, no illumination over here. There is some illumination. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is now that I've identified uh, which one's my hot, I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. So obviously at this point make sure that it is not plugged in. And as you can see, it's not plugged in, not getting any illumination. So what I like to do now at this point is these special 
uh, strippers, which is nice. Again, that's the GS-394 model. They are going to be a little bit more expensive than your common wire strippers, but you don't have to use these. So if you have these, as you can see, um, it actually acts as a spreader. So it doesn't cut the wire, it just spreads it. It strips it and spreads that rubber uh, casing that goes around if you're hot and you're neutral. And then you could just carefully spread these apart like so. And then you could simply go like this, make sure that you have enough, and then you can go ahead and use your wire ties that way. However, the most common way that you're going to see is uh, without even using that spreader that I showed you. So if you picture this, you know, uh, not being spread apart and no exposed wire, uh, we've already uh, carefully ran a line to separate. So now what you're going to do at this point is if cut them right in half so now you have two separate pieces so again you want to be very careful uh, when you cut these apart to know uh, which ones you're hot and which ones you're neutral so cut one at a time um, I'm familiar enough I've done this enough times that I'm not concerned I know which one's my hot and which one's my neutral um, but with that being said I would just simply uh, strip one at a time go ahead and make your connections uh, then that way you don't get confused and you know, possibly the um, polarity for any reason at all. Because you don't want to do that because you obviously short it out and uh, you know that's never a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and since I've got these, I really like these. Um, they work a lot better than your common wire strippers. They do a lot better job. So again, this side here is going to be my my uh, neutral side, which is going to be your white wire. So you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and strip just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. So you can see here, I have my neutral. wire strip. So now I'm just going to group these wires together. So you're going to have a total of three at this point. And then you can go ahead and get that started by turning it clockwise. Or to the right. And I'm simply the same thing clockwise with wire nut. Go ahead and get that nice and seated in there, nice and tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the exact same process here for the hot, which is your black wire. So go ahead and strip. And you only need to take off about a quarter of an inch, half an inch. You don't need any more than that. Um, and if you ever take off too much, you know, it, it's not going to hurt anything. You can always uh, or, uh, cut off any excess. Do it over a trash because you don't want these um, copper pieces getting in your fingers or in your feet. Especially if you have kids because it does not feel good. So if you do have access, you know, just make sure you do it over a trash can. So same thing, clockwise. Seat it in there good. Go ahead and test it. There you go. Next step here, I'll go ahead and do is grab my shroud. And this is where your Phillips screwdriver is needed. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up. 
like so. You don't have to back the screws all the way out. There's a screw and a nut on either side. So you just want to back those up enough so you can do this next part. So the next part I'm going to do, and you could already have this fed through, you know, um, so there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Just, it only takes a couple of seconds. Let's go ahead and, and uh, finish this process. So you want that seated in there, and you'll see this rubber. See it's raised up about a quarter to a half an inch above, so you don't want to go too far in. Uh, you want it just below um, where this tapers off. And you can see it's in there snug. Go ahead, screw the bulb in. What I like to do is do one of these at a time. So you only need about eight 10 inch piece of electrical tape. Go ahead and wrap your wire nuts here, each of them separate. So, then what I like to do is basically start right here, almost towards the, uh, the base of the light socket itself. The wires are straight, and then just carefully take your time to start wrapping that around, like so. And then I'm going to actually flip it over once, and then complete. The process I just wrap it nice and neat, just like so. So there you have it. Simple as that. You can daisy chain, you know, more than one light. So there you have it. Which is your compact fluorescent lamp. I talked about before. So it comes in a 12 pack. 6500 Kelvin rating so your basic daylight lamp and illumination and I find that these things work not only from an energy consumption standpoint um, but there are only you know 13 watts they're rated at 800 lumens uh, so for what I need to because I run a lot of my tanks uh, you know with my uh, shrimp and so forth and just my grow out tanks there's a lot of uh, 20 uh, longs in your standard standard 10 gallon tanks so based on the depth of those tanks I find even with um, any of your rooted plants and so forth uh, floating plants and you can look at previous videos um, uh, that I have of that and uh, with you know some of my walk around videos and so forth definitely check it out uh, and see for yourself uh, you get overall uh, decent growth uh, for uh, low to medium light growing plants obviously plants that don't uh, need any form of uh, additional co2 uh, however I do use uh, fertilizer uh, for the plants as well so with a good fruit uh, and this lighting I find uh, that it works exceptionally well uh, based on my conditions uh, hopefully you can take something away from this any questions for me definitely leave them in the comment section below. As always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. We'll talk to you guys soon.